Welcome to the deep dive. Today we're uh, really digging into Yuzu, specifically its role in, well, making Kwamalo environments even better. <laughs> You're likely here because you want the fast track, right? <laughs> the key info on how Yuzu adds value for Kwamalo users. And that's exactly what we're aiming for. We've gone through their own materials, the detailed descriptions, the FAQs. Yeah, the comprehensive stuff. Exactly, to pull out the essence for you. So our mission today, extract the really important bits about Yuzu. You know, how it extends Kwamalo's strengths and things like data protection, availability, management, but without getting too bogged down in like super technical weeds. Right, and maybe it helps to quickly set the scene with Kwamalo itself first, what makes it you know, a solid base to build on. Good idea. So Kwamalo, Seattle-based company, they've got this modern file system, works on-prem and in the cloud. Yeah, and a really big strength is uh, its stability. It's just robust. Right, super stable. Exactly, and that gives you security and resilience you know, at different levels, mm -hmm. like inside a server node, across the whole cluster. And even geographically, with replication. Right? Precisely. Replication's a big part of that resilience story. And users seem to really like them. That high net promoter score they always mention, it kind of speaks volumes in the storage world. It does, and that Slack support channel people talk about, it's often highlighted as, well, direct and refreshing. Just easy to get help. Yeah, no kidding. Plus, it's designed to be, well, simpler to manage. Implementations, scaling, updates, they aim for straightforward. Absolutely. Reduces that admin headache. Yeah. And it tackles some of those uh, classic storage problems. We have what specifically? Well, things like scaling limits, those super slow file system scans or tree walks. Oh, yeah, the tree walks. Getting decent analytics easily, mm. managing quotas without a fuss. Comilo's architecture seems built to kind of sidestep those legacy issues. That responsiveness too, like change in quotas, it's yeah. supposed to be almost instant. Pretty much, yeah. Even under load and the API first approach is huge. Right. For integration automation, yeah. that's key these days. Totally. Makes it flexible for modern IT. Plus, you get that performance and flexibility, whether it's in your own data center or the public cloud. And it scales both ways capacity and performance. And often their cloud data fabric kind of ties it all together, giving you access wherever the data actually lives. Good for distributed teams. Okay, so that's Quimbalo. Solid foundation. Now enter Yuzu, Hamburg, Germany. And they only do Quimbalo add-ons. That's kind of unusual. It really is. That laser focus means they get like super deep into the Quimbalo platform. They understand it inside out. Which should mean their stuff works really well with it. That's the idea. And they basically have two main product lines. Okay, what are they? First is the Yuzu Quimbalo Boreos backup integration. Think high-speed backups. Boreos. Okay. And the second? That's just called Yuzu software. It's more of a companion suite. Uh, for enhancing the day-to-day -day management side of Quimbalo. Got it. Let's start with the backup piece then. The Boreos integration. Kumalo handles billions of files, which is great, but backing that up sounds like a nightmare. It definitely poses a challenge, like we mentioned those traditional tree walks to see what changed. On billions of files, that can take forever and hammer the system. So Boreos itself, what is that for anyone who hasn't heard of it? Sure. Boreos stands for Backup Archiving Recovery, open source. It's a pretty powerful, uh, well-regarded open source backup tool Works across different networks, supports lots of OS's Linux, Windows, Mac OS. Okay, so it's flexible. Very. And it has plugins for all sorts of things. Databases, apps, cloud storage, VMs. Right, so how does Yuzi's plugin make Boreos better for Kumalo? What's the secret sauce? The key is Kumalo's snapshot tech. Instead of that slow tree walk, Yuzi's plugin with Boreos compare the metadata between two Kumalo snapshots. Ah, so comparing the metadata, not the actual data blocks. Exactly. Snapshots are essentially metadata pointers. Comparing them is incredibly fast. So Boreos, via Yuzu, can figure out what changed almost instantly. That means super fast incremental backups. Okay, super fast sounds good, but like how fast are we talking? Can you give us a sense of the improvement? Yeah, the difference can be pretty stark. Say you have hundreds of terabytes. Your backup initiation time might go from, I don't know, hours down to just minutes. Hours to minutes? Seriously? Yeah. For bigger shops, maybe what took a whole day now starts in, again, minutes. And for the really huge multi-petabyte environments, hmm. talk about going from potentially weeks just to start the backup. Freakly. Down to maybe around two hours. Think about what that means for potential data loss hours versus potentially days or weeks. That's not just faster, that's fundamentally different. If it takes weeks to figure out what to back up, you just can't 
do frequent backups. Precisely. And that hits your recovery point objective, your RPO hard. How much data can you afford to lose? Faster initiation means you can run backups way more often, shrinking that potential data loss window dramatically. So Yuzi and Boreos together make frequent backups practical, even on massive Quamulo clusters. That's the core benefit for backup, yes. And because Boreos is open source. It's cost effective too. Right. Yuzi as the deep Quamulo integration, Boreos provides the robust open source engine. It's a strong combo, especially cost-wise, and really the only open source option doing this level of snapshot integration for Quamulo right now. Okay, clear picture on backups. Let's switch gears to the other product, Yuzu Software, the companion suite. Their motto is, simplicity is complexity resolved. What does that actually mean in practice? It means they're focused on making tools that feel intuitive, easy to use for the admin. Right. But underneath, they've engineered robust solutions to handle the, uh, the complex realities of enterprise storage management. Things should be well-structured, easy to slot in, and just work reliable. Makes sense. And a big feature here is failover and failback automation. They use an airplane autopilot analogy. Yeah, think of it like this. Your main Quamalo cluster is the plane flying along. Needing to switch to your secondary backup cluster, maybe for maintenance, maybe something went wrong, just like needing the backup engine. Yeah. A skilled IT crew, the pilots, can manage that switch manually, and land the plane safely. But Yuzi's automation is like the advanced autopilot. It handles all the tricky steps of switching clusters and making sure all the clients, the passengers, get redirected to the right place smoothly. Because doing that manually sounds complex, lots of moving parts, potential for error. Oh, absolutely. Multiple steps, careful planning needed, documentation, testing. Yuzi aims to automate all that. It makes it less risky, easier for any admin level, and it boosts your overall infrastructure resilience, makes disaster recovery planning more solid and easier to test, presumably, which is huge for DR. Exactly. Routine testing becomes much less daunting, and it supports the common access methods, SMB, NFS. Yep, SMB, NFS, and even SMB via DFS and distributed file system namespaces. So you can trigger a full failover or failback with basically a click or an API call. And complete failover means it handles different replication setups, one way, two way. Right, unidirectional, bidirectional replication, it's designed for both. What if new stuff gets replicated during the failover? Like changes happen on the secondary site while it's active? Yuzi is smart about that too, apparently. During failback, if new replications occurred while you were failed over, it'll actually prompt you. Ask you which cluster should be the primary source for those specific directories now. Ah, so it gives you control to avoid data conflict. That's clever. Yeah, seems pretty granular. So compared to trying to script this yourself, or using a generic DR tool, Yuzu's angle is that it's purpose-built for Quimolo. Definitely. It's positioned as the advanced Quimolo-specific option, scripting it yourself. Possible with Quimolo's tools, sure, but scripts get complex, they break, the person who wrote them leaves. Yeah, the maintenance nightmare. Right. And generic tools often don't understand Quimolo's specific replication its management objects as deeply as Yuzu does. Okay, that makes sense. The next big feature in Yuzu software is object synchronization. The analogy here is evacuating an office but needing your familiar desk set up in the safe room. How does that map to Quimolo? So Quimolo replication copies the actual data, the files and folders between clusters. That's the core directory level sync. Got it, the raw data is there. But just having the data isn't enough after a failover. You need all the configurations that go with it, your SMB shares, your NFS exports, quotas, access permissions. All that stuff needs to be set up correctly on the secondary cluster too. Otherwise users can't access the data or things aren't managed properly. Exactly, so Yuzi object synchronization automates keeping those configurations, the objects in sync between your clusters continuously in near real time. So it's syncing shares, exports, quotas, all the management stuff related to the replicated data. Precisely. It figures out which configurations belong to the replicated directories and keeps them mirrored. And it watches for changes on either side and syncs them. It even tracks changes made on the secondary during a failover. And if those configs aren't synced, what breaks? Well, users might not be able to connect to their shares. NFS mounts could fail for applications. Quotas might not be enforced, leading to runaway storage use. Permissions could be wrong, creating security holes. Even things like encryption settings being off. Lots of potential problems. And trying to keep all that aligned manually across clusters sounds painful and risky. Hugely. Very error prone, very time consuming. Scripting it is also tough, especially handling all the failover edge cases reliably requires constant upkeep. 
but user sync is designed to handle the failover failback stuff seamlessly. Yes, that's a core design point. It works with simple two-cluster setups or more complex multi-cluster layouts, one-way or two-way replication. It's failover aware, so even if the primary is down, it tracks changes on the secondary and syncs them back later. And setting it up. Is it complicated? Yeah. Designed to be pretty straightforward. You basically select the object types you care about, shares, exports, quotas, rules, and kick off the sync. It even shows you a preview first. Then it just runs in the background. Okay. Now, they tackle the scripting as an alternative. Question, head on. Quimolo has good scripting tools, the QQ CLI, the API. So why not just DIY? That's a fair point. Quimolo is very scriptable. But Yuzi's integrated solution offers advantages beyond just automating single tasks. Like what? Well, one big one is reducing dependence on that one scripting guru who knows how everything works. Ah, the bus factor. Exactly. Yuzi is a supported, standardized product. Also, the tight integration between failover automation and object sync is crucial. Yuzu manages how they interact, like logging config changes during failover so they can be synced back correctly. That's hard to replicate reliably with separate scripts. And less ongoing maintenance for the user, I guess. For sure. Scripts need constant tending as things change. Yuzi handles updates and compatibility. It provides that continuous failover readiness without constant script tweaking. Which must make actual DR events, or even just testing, much less stressful. Absolutely. Yeah. Clicking a button versus running a complex script sequence under pressure, big difference. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's built to handle those com complex, multi-cluster Cumulo environments in a coordinated way. Okay, let's move to the antivirus integration. Protecting large file systems is different from endpoint AV, right? Totally different challenge. On your laptop, the AV often hooks deep into the OS for real-time scanning. But Quamolo, for good reason stability, performance doesn't let you install third-party AV directly on the storage nodes themselves. And just relying on the AV on users' machines isn't always enough. It might not be. Users could disable it. Some apps might have exclusions. And as the storage admin, you don't really control the AV on every single client hitting your storage. So what does a storage admin want from storage level AV on Quamolo? Typically, you want to inspect all file changes, but without killing storage performance. You want to avoid adding new failure points or complexity. You definitely want to avoid constant unaccessed scanning on the storage itself. Use a good, reputable AV engine. And it needs to scale. Okay, lots of requirements. How does Yuzi's integration try to meet those? It uses a smart architecture. There's the main Yuzi software appliance and then separate dedicated scan servers. Scan servers? Yep. On these servers, you install a lightweight Yuzi protection client and your chosen commercial AV software. Ah, so you bring your own AV engine. Exactly. The workflow is, Quemolo streams modification info metadata to the UZ appliance. UZ intelligently figures out which files need scanning and forwards the details to the scan servers. Mm -hmm. The scan servers then pull the file and scan it using the AV engine you installed there. Mm -hmm. If malware is found, the AV client on the scan server takes the action you've configured in your AV policy. So Yuzi itself isn't the scanner, it's the orchestrator connecting Quamolo to your chosen AV on dedicated servers. Precisely. It enables scanning shortly after a file is written, catching things quickly without the performance hit of on-access scanning on the main storage. And the scanning load is pushed off to those scalable scan servers. You can add more scan servers if needed. Yep, scale them independently. And you manage it all, which directories get scanned, which servers scan, which clusters from the central Yuzui interface. Communication is encrypted, uses least privilege. What about Quamilo's cloud data fabric with clusters in different places? Fully compatible. You usually just need one Yuzui appliance at the main hub cluster, and it can coordinate scanning across the whole fabric. You deploy scan servers locally in different regions for best performance, though. Okay. And ransomware. How does this fit into defending against that? Yuzi's AV integration helps by catching known malware quickly. But for ransomware specifically, the emphasis from Yuzu 2 is really on immutable snapshots and solid backups as your primary recovery plan. Right, the snapshots Quomolo does and things like offsite or cloud backups. Exactly, things that can't be easily deleted or encrypted by the ransomware. Yuzui's Boreos integration is positioned as a way to create those robust Quomolo backups efficiently. The AV is a layer, but recovery relies on snapshots and backups. It's different from, say, behavior analysis on the endpoint trying to stop encryption in progress. Makes sense. Defense in depth, but recovery is paramount. Okay, so Yuzu offers all of this. What about getting it, licensing it, supporting it? It's delivered as a virtual appliance. Deployment is meant to be quick. Minutes, apparently. 
Upgrades are in place via the UI. It integrates with those cross-replicating clusters we talked about, has a REST API for monitoring integration, built-in RBAC, LTPAD integration, standard enterprise stuff. And the license, how does that work? It's an annual subscription. Based on the total Quamilo licensed capacity, the terabytes that UZ is managing across all your clusters. Okay, based on managed Quamilo TVs. Right, and that subscription usually covers all the features, failover sync, AV integration framework, plus an implementation workshop, support, future updates. You can typically run unlimited AV scan servers and even multiple UZ appliances under that one license. But the Brio's backup plugin is separate. Yes, the Brio's plugin is licensed as a distinct product. Everything else in the UZ software suite is unique. And support. Quamalo is known for good support. How does Yuzu fit in? They integrate with Quamalo's model. Since Quamalo Care has those high NPS scores and dedicated customer success managers, Yuzu users often get support via the same Quamalo Slack channel. So you can talk to both Quamalo and Yuzu experts easily in one place. Plus, there's a dedicated portal, my.uz.com, for software and docs. Nice, streamlined support. And Quimolo often sells through partners, right? Yes, partners like Aero, Fujitsu, HPE, Supermicro. Yuzia collaborates with these same partners, distributors, OEMs too, aiming for complete integrated solutions for the customer. Okay, so let's try to wrap this up. Our deep dive shows Yuzu really zeroing in on enhancing Quimolo by tackling specific challenges. Right, like boosting data protection with those fast snapshot integrated backups using Boreos. Ensuring availability with automated failover and failback. Keeping configurations consistent across clusters with that intelligent object synchronization. And adding that robust AV integration layer without tanking performance. And all wrapped up with a focus on making it simpler to manage overall. Their specialization, that Quamalo only focus, seems key to delivering that tight integration and potentially better performance and reliability than generic builds. That's certainly their argument. Deeper integration leads to a better, easier experience for the Quamalo admin. So if you're running Quamalo or looking at it, and these areas, faster backups, easier DR, config consistency, scalable AV are important, Yuzi sounds like something to check out. Absolutely. Their website, uzi.com, is the place to go for more details, docs, or even to ask for a demo specific to your setup. Okay. And as we finish up this deep dive on UZ and Quamalo, here's something to maybe chew on. With data becoming ever more critical and complex, what's the real value of, let's say, true peace of mind about your storage infrastructure's resilience and security? And beyond the basics, what steps are you actively taking to ensure that peace of mind? 